Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. In this episode, we are going to attempt to send a Kerbal over to the moon, once again on a flyby mission. Just a flyby, but uh, we have had trouble with that before. I lost a Kerbal on the previous attempt. We have done many tests and I have made some changes. Hopefully this will work. So let's just verify. I've removed the Able Avionics package. Uh, the Kerbal in the capsule should have as much control. It should be 5 tons of control as was true of the Able Avionics package. Um, I've reconfigured the chutes. We remember there was a problem with that. Now pre-deployment pressure is 0.3 atmospheres. Deployment altitude 700. I only have two chutes because it seemed like four might be too much. And indeed real chutes seems to indicate that this is adequate. Uh, they are single chutes only. I've uh, and I've done that partly because it makes better room for the fuel cells. I've tucked the fuel cells a little bit into the tank. So I'm hoping that that does not cause any heating issues, but it might. Uh, that is the biggest element, uh, biggest question mark element of uncertainty here. Uh, the tank up here has been resized a bit. It is now a little bit bigger, but I've compensated by reducing utilization. Otherwise, the rest of the rocket is entirely the same, including the amount of ablator we have on the lunar-rated heat shield. By the way, on that note, we have lunar-rated heat shields, and that's very nice. Um, shouldn't we have heat shields rated for other things? I mean, it seems very limiting to only have lunar-rated heat shields. Are we eventually going to get Mars-rated heat shields and, you know, heat shields for other circumstances? Because uh, I don't know if we're going to be just aiming for the moon, are we? I mean, at least some probes will hopefully come back from far-flung locations, who knows? So I don't know, uh, apparently we've just got lunar for now. Anyway, like I said, the rest of the rocket is the same, and this is the Delta V situation, uh, 12,748, except it's not showing the boosters as separate from the core stage, so that's a little bit, that's inaccurate. And so we do have a high thrust weight ratio initially, but once again, uh, we did have some thrust weight problems that seem to go a little bit high. And, uh, well, we'll just have to deal with that for now, I think, uh, especially since it's not showing it proper. And I can't make it any heavier. I'd like to make it heavier, but I can't. So, uh, yeah, until we unlock the upgrade to launch pad, this is the best we can do. Okay, so I'm saving, and it's going to take... I have no idea about the build times anymore. I mean, uh, basically this rocket uh, with with an extra Able Avionics package, granted, and two extra parachutes uh, took 170 days in the last episode. Now it takes 92 days. I don't understand. <laughs> I mean, I really, I don't understand sometimes. So, okay, well, 92 days, I'll take it. So let's build two of them, uh, a backup just in case so that we can edit it. I accept that, of course, the second uh, second one will take longer, but maybe maybe it's because we rec recovered the boosters. I don't know. I mean, if we do recover the boosters. That's why they have parachutes on top. But here, this is... No, well, I don't know. Maybe that's it. Okay, so the deadline that we have here is 293 days. So that's what we're working off of. And, uh, well... Both of these rockets should be complete by then, so we'll have two chances. Uh, hopefully it won't take that much. Uh, if so, we really deserve the reputation hit that we're going to get. On other notes, I should point out that I didn't change the tanks for the core or the boosters to service module tanks. We had a fuel boil off issue before, and uh, we're going to have that again because they're still the default tanks. Trying to change them to service module tanks. Uh, took too much out of our Delta V. It was too heavy. Okay, anyway, warping to completeness. Okay, here we go. How far off are we from the moon? Can we just launch now? That would be safer. Ah, uh, there's the moon. Seven degrees? I think I can manage seven degrees. That'll reduce boil off if I do. Otherwise, we'll have to time warp through a lot of time. We'll have to time warp through a whole day. Okay, we'll launch now. Throttle up. SAS is on. Okay, Jeb. 
Here we go. Oh, I don't want to cover him. Right. Ignition. And launch. I just remembered that I totally forgot about the RL-10. RL-10. I should have done RL-10 tests. Dang it. Not that. Test flight might get Jeb. Um, it can abort to orbit, so we'll just bring him directly back down, but... In that case, we're gonna have some issues fulfilling the contract. Uh, 62 minutes mean time before failure. I don't know. Cross your fingers, folks. We have this high thrust weight ratio, so the pitch program is going to go a little bit more quickly than normal. Oh, by the way, I found that there's no practical difference between 400 and 800 particles. So I'm just gonna boost it to 800. It was doing 800 anyway. Now it's doing 1,000. It only sorta kinda tries to limit stuff, but yeah, I timed it and there doesn't seem to be any frame rate benefit or physics rate benefit to cutting that below 800. I should reduce the atmospheric effects in this. That causes some frame rate lag. We have a little bit of overheating up there. Passing 37 kilometers. Hopefully not an issue. Gotta have to watch out for the boosters. We will have an imbalance between kerosene and oxygen. The oxygen will run out first because of boil off during launch. I'm beginning to correct the inclination. Okay, that sounds like the boosters are out. Yep. Okay, set. Okay, boosters are away. That overheating is really worrisome now. We are going at very high g-forces, but we're at 60,000 meters. Something about this is very dangerous. Was having the the able AVI's package on top a saving grace somehow? Was it absorbing some heat that I couldn't figure out otherwise? I don't get it. Well, actually, uh, it's definitely not facing the sun. The sun's back there, so I don't know why it's got this problem. Okay, set. Okay, and ignition. There we go. A J2. And I'm gonna release the escape tower now. Okay, well that's off. Don't know if that's gonna help the capsule any. Any indication that we're cooling off up there? I'm hoping it was just the high g-forces through the atmosphere. Lots of little particles bumping into the capsule and all. Weird that it's just that part. I mean, it's not the parachutes, it's not the RCS thrusters, it's not the fuel cells that are sort of poking out. No, it's just the most critical part. <laughs> I mean, it's like... Usually the procedural tanks uh, like to explode first, but no, it's really the capsule. It's very much the capsule. That is so bad. <laughs> I mean, it's just... Uh, is it gonna be bad on the way down too? I mean, why? Why must you do this to me? Our relative inclination is down to 5.25 degrees. It started out at 7, so we're doing a good job correcting that. About halfway to orbit now. Okay, one minute left to go in the stage, and also one minute left to apoapsis. 
and it seems like the pod is cooling off a bit but it's taking its own sweet time to do it. We are down to 3.2 degrees of inclination and still descending so that's working out for us. The rest of it, well it all really depends on whether the RL-10 ignites or blows up, I suppose. Okay, stage set. And ignition. Okay, the RL-10 is go for its first ignition. It is, uh, well, it's ignited. Let's see if it stays that way. Okay, we're getting close to orbit here, and the RL-10 stage alone will have enough for the transfer to the moon. We won't have to use much of the service module, I don't think, as long as the RL-10 holds out. Our relative inclination is 2.3 degrees to the moon, so I'll have to do a little bit of finagling to make sure that... Um, that we get close enough to fulfill the contract. Now these are service module tanks for the RL-10, so there shouldn't be any boil off. Or at least there shouldn't be much. Okay, I think that'll do. Engine shut down 290 by 226. And yeah, 3194 meters per second left. So pretty good so far. Let me extend the solar panels. Okay, so here's the plot. We have a 3,143 meter per second burn initially and then a mid-course correction of about 180 right there. It's a little bit off from the ascending node because I didn't want to do the, the inclination correction so close to Earth. A little bit further out probably is for the best. And in this case, we get to 3,367 kilometers above the moon. The target is below, below 5,000 kilometers, so that is positive. And then that gives us a free return trajectory, and we will get back with uh, periapsis in the atmosphere. We won't go for 51 kilometers, but I guess we can aim for a little bit below 65 kilometers. We know that 65 produces uh, a skip out. And that's not a bad thing in this case. I mean, we've got enough food, water, and oxygen, and we've got uh, the fuel cells for electric charge. But I'll make that decision after we do the initial stuff. And of course, we check whether the RL-10 relights. So as you can see, the initial burn will uh, take most of the RL-10 stage, pretty much all of the RL-10 stage. And it's my intention to ditch the stage and just use the asterisk for the mid-course plane change. And uh, anything else? Let me double check how long the burn is. I mean, it's, uh, well, we end up with double our thrust to weight ratio on the opposite side. So I guess we'll start out uh, about five minutes before the node, maybe five and a half to six minutes before the node. Try and do it reasonably accurately. Okay, Smarty SS is having a heck of a time trying to get this to the node. Once we turn on the engine, it's fine, but before then, SAS tends to be better at just holding things where I've put them. I think we should start out soon, though. Okay, I think that's good enough for me. Ignition. We have ignition node. Okay, well, the RL-10's lit. Now, last time, it quit in the middle of the burn. I'll keep recording, just in case something like that happens again. Usually, I just don't record the long transfers, for obvious reasons. It's just more video to process. But, since there's a possibility of... of mayhem, I'll keep recording. Okay, we are currently at the maneuver node. And I am pleased to say that we are halfway through the burns, so everything seems to be timed appropriately. We are currently over Florida. And yep, everything's nominal. I have activated the CO2 scrubber, by the way. So CO2 scrubbing is being done. 
I'm a little bit concerned that the reason the other one blew up was because of burn time. And I, I didn't really take a look at what the rate of burn time for this RL10 version is. Uh, if it is that the case that they're limited to less than I think they are, then we might uh, see this one explode at about the same time, which is about with like 700 meters per second left in the burn. I'm not sure. We'll see. I mean, in theory, the RL10s can go for 18 minutes and 45 seconds, but that's some of the later versions. I don't know about these early versions. Uh, okay, wait a minute. It just shut down on its own. Um, hold on, let me shut this down. Maybe it can relight? I don't know. Yeah, it just shut down on its own out of nowhere. Let me shut down the engine. Got to throttle up. Activate. Okay, while well, it's relighting, it just shut down. I don't know if it's a good idea to immediately relight it after it shut down. I don't know if it's like a computer that needs to be cooled down or because it open because it overheated, but it's obviously not overheating. I don't know. Uh oh. I don't know why it gave me that flag. Engine shut down. Vessel must not be in flight. I don't know what A does, so I'm not gonna touch anything. If you don't know what to do, don't touch anything. Okay, here we go. Looks like I just burned out this stage. Yeah, okay, and um, let me have Smart ASS turn towards. Well, maybe I shouldn't do that. I'll just do it myself, and I'll complete the plan maneuver as indicated. Okay, the maneuver node marker is running away from me here, and I can't turn quickly enough to catch it. I could use lateral thrusters, but I think I'll just I'll just leave it be. I think uh, 0.2 meters per second is close enough for now. Oh, 0 0.1. 0 0.1 is good. Okay, so yes. Now I'll have to replot this, and then we'll see what happens. Okay, the asterisk is very stable, throttling up. And ignition. Just have it point to the node there. All right. Is mid course correction underway? Being a bit high on the periapsis side around the moon, though it seems to be helping our Earth periapsis side here. Our limit on the moon is 5,000. I'm intent to have a good Earth periapsis. Okay, uh, about 64 kilometers. I think that's good. And our moon periapsis is 3,779 kilometers. Okay, let's head on over to the moon. Okay, crossing the moon encounter zone. Very gingerly. There we go. In 1x time warp, so hopefully things haven't been ruined. Yep, everything is fine. Okay, passing by the moon. Still a little bit hot. There's the moon. And we have a periapsis of 3,800 kilometers. It's funny, we don't seem to be consuming much water. Consumed a lot of oxygen. I haven't turned on the fuel cell, I don't think. Okay, here we are within 5,000 kilometers of the moon. And taking a look at the situation. Okay, it says vessel state is confirmed. And I'm going to lock the... Oh, there's no more hydrogen up here. 
Okay, well, I guess we'll get the fuel cell going and drain the hydrogen from down there. Let me lock this hydrogen in the capsule at least. Whoa. That's a lot of... No, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay, that's all locked, right? Hydrogen, oxygen. Okay, so we will start the fuel cell and I'll take the hydrogen hopefully... Oh, no. What? Jeb. Jeb is here. Why does it say no connection? Curb, uh, remote tech. Uh, hold on. Let me uh, EVA Jeb temporarily and have him do the EVA report. Keep the data and board. It, it flashed local. Okay, now it's local control. All right. While it's local control, I'm going. Oh, wait. Uh, it's it's not. It's not totally sure about the situation, is it? Hmm. Let me uh, time warp a tad. Maybe it'll change its mind. Okay. Well, it's changing its mind temporarily. Uh, I need to activate the fuel cell. Okay. There we go. I don't know. Did I? Maybe I toggle power is power. Uh, everything else seems fine. It's operational. Looks all right. Anyway, uh, let's do the crew report. Ah, we we raided that with the Kerbal who perished. Okay. Oh uh, well. Everything else looks fine. What's our Earth periapsis now? 198. Okay. Well, anyway, let's proceed. We will fix that in Earth SOI. Okay, here we go. Getting close to the desired numbers. Okay, um... Let's go lower than with the test. Okay, I'm gonna. Well, not that much lower. Let's go a little bit higher. 62.5 ish. Sounds good. Or 62.8. Fine. Okay, okay, let's go retrograde, RCS on, sixty-two point eight, let's call it. The pod is a little bit hot right now. Doesn't have the bar though, it's just red. Okay, I'm gonna attempt to use the rest of the fuel just to slow down. Whoa, uh, that changed our periapsis by quite a lot. Mm hmm, okay, okay, okay. Smarty SS is not doing any favors here. Eh, uh, I give up. Uh, we'll just, uh, we'll just. Dump the service module and then try and stabilize. Make sure the parachutes are okay. Yeah, settings are fine. Okay, let's see. SAS on. One last try with the service module. Okay, that'll do for me. 62.45 kilometers on the periapsis, and we are going to unlock the RCS up here. And then dump the service module. Unlock all the things. Everything's unlocked there already. Okay. So, service module away. Okay. And I'm gonna say surface negative relative velocity. Okay. I'm not gonna toggle the scent mode, I don't think, because, again, always suspicious of that. Oh, there's the overheating bar again, though. Let's 
Smart ASS is using a little bit of RCS to keep us stable. Oh, it's maxing out the pitch. We can see here, that's not like last time. Sort of tilting off to the side there. I don't know. I do not like the tilt. Maybe I should have just gone with Orbit Retrograde like last time, because that seemed to work better. Okay, we're about to hit Periapsis here. I think we might come down just on this one. It's pretty close. Okay, we are at Periapsis and now going up. But I think we're gonna be soon coming back down anyway. We'll coast at this altitude for a little bit. Yep, here we go. I mean, just perfectly flat and then starting to come down, it looks like. I, I sort of want to change to orbit retrograde instead of this weird position we're in, but... Right now, things are working well enough that I don't want to mess with it either. Okay, now at 5 Gs. Really sort of would like things to go like the other way instead of tilting like this. You'd want it to tilt like the opposite kind of thing. Uh, I don't think I can do anything about that though. 7 G's. Jeb's gonna get a huge G load because we're tilted this way instead of the opposite way. 8 G's. Nine G's. Ten G's. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Okay, crew G limit. Oh no. Please. Uh, oh no. That just popped off. Failed due to aerodynamic stresses. Okay. I guess I I guess that's right. I think we're gonna go doing probes for quite a while. Yep. It's gonna be a probe space program. I don't know if we got any funds left. I'll have to check the contract. I'm gonna just abandon this thing. Well, failure is really not an option. We will lose 2 million funds and we don't have that much and I don't want to go back into bankruptcy. Not to mention the reputation hit is pretty much all the reputation we've got. Alright, well, I've decided to restore a save that I had. I zipped up the save right before the lunar encounter because of possible RAM issues and just in case it was a glitch. And, well, I mean, obviously the failure was my fault, but I think in this case I really don't want to have to do this again. Also, I don't want to lose Jeb. So, yeah, we will uh, pick it up from here as we are entering Lunar SOI. And this time I'm going to aim higher on the periapsis so we don't go straight down. We'll, we'll, do, a, we'll do a bounce off of the atmosphere and then coming back down on the second, second pass like we did with the test pod. I think uh, trying to bring it straight down with this one without having done so with the test pod was a little bit too ambitious. Also, I will uh, attempt to try and manually control it. Obviously, the problem was G-forces, 
and in that case we will um, maybe we should try the descent mode thing I don't know why I was deflecting away from the the what you got uh, surface negative relative velocity uh, this should technically have an even better sort of uh, center of mass center of lift situation than the previous one because we took off the atlas not the atlas I keep saying atlas the able avionics core so there's less mass up top than there used to be much less mass because we also took off two parachutes so yeah I mean if the if the test pod didn't have uh, you know mass to lift issues I don't see why this would unless you know the the fuel tanks are creating uh, the or maybe the able avionics package actually created lift which was well, I hope not but uh, uh, in which case we might have had a problem but yeah well I'll see how it goes I'm just not gonna let this one go like that so here we go into Lunar SOI alright keep data board and we know that the crew report can't be done because it had already been done so we will just fly on by back out of Lunar SOI okay 65 yes 65 alright let's just take that quickly in time warp jeez alright well on the first pass it'll be relatively gentle so we'll see what descent mode does and then we can judge from there whether it's a good idea or not maybe this time I'll also just go orbit retrograde again because that's what we did with the test try to restore most of the variables to the test conditions I'm not even gonna try and use the service module engine to slow down first we didn't do that on the test and I guess we'll just skip that here as well Okay, I'm gonna dump the service module now. Okay, off that goes. Wow, that gave us a kick. Alright, 65 kilometers as advertised. And also, I'm going to enable the descent mode. I always forget whether it's the capsule door down or capsule door up. Um, I'm going to roll with the capsule door up. Maybe it should be down. Seems like it would be better shielded if it was facing down. But then again, this this has the horizon in the right place, so maybe this is the way to go. I'm gonna tilt up myself here, just a little. SAS is trying to do something. Let me tilt above the retrograde marker just a little bit. Hmm. does seem to tend to want to nose down yeah look at that I don't know if rolling around might help let me roll uh, ooh, rolling is bad. Rolling, hmm, well, I'll try. Just manually trying to roll here. And see if going upside down on it changes the situation and makes us nose up instead. And it is all about trying to save Jeb. I mean, we've, we've already had Jeb perish, so we might as well try stuff, right? I don't know, I think this way is better. So, uh, ground side up on the nav ball. Uh, I mean, I'm even gonna take uh, SAS off here. I don't know if those parts are gonna overheat though. Now, if this deviation is due to descent mode, that doesn't explain why it happened last time when I didn't have descent mode on. Weird. We are now going up, we've passed periapsis. Oh my, what? 
What? What happened? What? What? It just suddenly went poof. It wasn't overheating. It just said it just says the pod exploded due to overheating. It didn't overheat last time and we were going way further down in the atmosphere and everything. He w he he got to the point where he uh, experienced 15 G's. Okay. Well, I don't know what to say. Okay, well, I guess I'm up for doing this once again. So I picked it up from the same position at the moon, and I brought it to the same sort of periapsis. But this time, no descent mode. We are going to not have descent mode. Maybe tilting the capsule like that caused the overheating. I don't know. We will try it out. We will try to manually keep it to the retrograde vector flat, which I think was how the test pod was. But as I've noted before, maybe maybe that Able Avionics package actually helped. We've encountered that sort of thing previously. I still will put the capsule side down, so we're going to have the ground up in the nav ball. I don't know. Well, wait, was that how the test capsule did it? I do have to wonder. Maybe I should be like more off to the side. Maybe I should spin around. Hmm. Let me verify descent mode is not enabled. Descent mode is false. Okay. But for some reason, even the the first try deviated from retrograde and couldn't get back to it even though the scent mode was already off so I don't know SAS seems to be using an increasing amount of pitch in order to bring us to the retrograde vector I'm correcting the trajectory myself trying to at least Yeah, it is deviating. Maybe I'll rotate. So even without the scent mode active, it still wants to deviate from retrograde. Now our problem when it was nose down was g-forces, not heating. Maybe I can keep nose down here. We're not going to experience high g-forces yet. Though I have no idea what we're going to do on the next pass. How we're going to deal with this. And I have no idea why it's deviating from retrograde. Why it always wants to tilt away like this. It seems like what descent mode should do. I mean, this deviation is what you'd expect from a minor offset of center of mass. Everything is symmetrical on this. There shouldn't be an offset of the center of mass. You can see the top there. What if I turn SAS off and just start a rotation going? Oh! Okay, well that happened earlier than usual. Firing the RCS might overheat, but I mean the the overheat indicator just went poof and it got it. Well, I don't know, guys. If you guys have any suggestions, feel free to tell me. All right. Well, well, there you have it. I tried three times. Third time was not the charm. Well, tell me what you think. Uh, so, uh, if you have any comments, please do leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.